In the days of old, if you wanted to import a project from an older version of Game Maker to a newer one, for example, Game Maker 8 to Game Maker Studio 1, uh, you would have usually run into problems. Functions got removed or renamed, did they started to do slightly different things in just such a way that your game would stop working properly. And it was not uncommon if you were to import something, especially if you did something weird, and see a bunch of warning messages and compiler messages before anything else happened, and then just have your game not work when you try to run it. For Game Maker Studio 2, Yo-Yo Games has done a lot to try and mitigate that problem. It's not perfect yet, but they added a lot of compatibility layers and compatibility functionality for older projects. And for the most part, if you want to import something from Game Maker Studio 1 to Game Maker Studio 2, then you shouldn't have too many problems. So I'm going to bring out this thing. Remember this thing? Boy, this feels old, doesn't it? Game Maker Studio 1 launcher. I'm going to open a project, which is, uh, remember when I was trying to do like a tower defense series many, many years ago? I still think about returning to that one of these days, and I pretty much always think I have other things I need to be doing, and so I, uh, I never do. Anyway, I'm going to run the game so that you can see what it looks like. It's a, uh, it's a very basic skeletal tower defense. Let's plot some things down. I don't have enough money to actually do that. This is not balanced at all, and you can't actually... Okay, there you go. Yeah. I was gonna say, do I not have enough money to buy more than one tower? But that's not the case. So this is a very skeletal tower defense um, game that I was working on for a little while. And it's working in Game Maker Studio 1. If I were to jump over here to Game Maker Studio 2, hit import, I will go to documents, GMS1, projects, and it is... It's in here somewhere, isn't it? All right, here it is, uh, Tower Defense Week 10. And let's save it. And we will see some things happening. There will be a, uh, there will be a bit of a load time. There will be this compatibility report, which I'll talk about later. I'll run the game before I do anything else, before I look at what's happened. And you have basically the same thing. Uh, let's drop down a, a tower fast. Let's let's spam the, the fast towers right next to each other, so they'll uh they'll be a bit of a barrage. That should absorb things as they come around the corners. In tower defense games, it's good to ha it's good to uh put towers on corners so they have more space to, to hit things. Uh, you can see it's basically working the same. And. And, and that one fast tower is knocking out the, uh, the enemies at the end, purely by accident. Alright, enough of that. So, not everything's the same. If I were to come back here, you can see I made decent use of, well, I made some use of backgrounds anyway. And, uh, as we all know, those have been deprecated in Game Maker Studio 2. Uh, the compatibility report here shows a, uh, a decently long list of changes. Most of them come in the form of renaming the uh, the documentation comments that I left behind in Game Maker Studio One style. Uh, there's a lot of leaving descriptions and parameters uh, in the tops of, of code files. Uh, there's this one section in the middle where a, uh, a backslash gets escaped to an, an actual backslash. That is slightly problematic, I'll talk about that soon. And of course, the main draw of this video is down at the bottom. There is a set of three compatibility scripts. This is actually not too many compatibility scripts. Often, um, in a bigger project, it's not uncommon to see way more. The compatibility reports, by the way, can be found in the notes section of the IDE. Uh, this is not especially, this is not an especially well-known feature of Game Maker, I don't think. Uh, but if you ever want a plain text note file that you can just, uh, that you can write notes in and refer back to later while you're working on your game, uh, you can automatically include them in the notes file. And they won't affect compilation or anything like that. They won't be distributed with your final game like an included file, they'll just be there while you're developing. So, the compatibility scripts are the subject of this video, as you can assume by looking at the, uh, at the title of this video. You can find them in the scripts folder, in the compatibility section, section and you can find them uh, arranged by, by category. The compatibility scripts are just regular old scripts, GML scripts. You can use them, you can modify them, you can copy and paste code out of them if you wish. 
If I open one up, I see instance create. And it's got some comments at the top, but most importantly, all it does is uh, retrieve the depth of an object because Game Maker Studio 2 changed the way depth works. And it's basically a wrapper function for instance create depth, which is uh, one of the two functions that replaced old instance create. And then after that, um, even though old instance create doesn't exist anymore, I will. Let's see, I want to find an instance of that. I believe the enemies are spawned in alarm zero here. Here we go. Instance create, which is no longer a game maker function, is it is automatically a script in this project, and you can use it just as you would have in the days of old. And the same goes for object get depth, although I believe that is a helper function and not actually a compatibility, a replacement for something that was in Game Maker Studio 1. Hey. You can see it's doing some slightly weirder things in here than, uh, than instance create is. I'll get back to that. Also, there is a script called underscore underscore global object depths, which is a little bit weird. This was not a, uh, this was not a function in old Game Maker. This is a, a piece of help, a helper function that Game Maker Studio 2 will use. And it's automatically generated a list of, uh, one names. And two, uh, these are the default depths of the objects of all these object types. Because once again, the way depth works has changed in Game Maker Studio 2. And it's, uh, it's not actually called from anywhere. The GML pragma function is a bit of a special function that just sends a message to the, uh, to the game to run this code before anything else happens in the game as a means of initialization. This is for the benefit of, uh, of instance depth. So the instance set depth can be pres preserved between Game Maker Studio 1 and 2. So this is fairly straightforward. Um, depending on what you're doing, you may see a lot of these. Last year, I finally started using Game Maker Studio 2 regularly, and I, uh, that's not what I was looking for, but okay. I imported some 3D projects into Game Maker Studio 2, and for the most part, they worked without me having to do too much fiddling around. Uh, but there were a whole list of 3D-related um, compatibility scripts that uh, appeared. So this on its own isn't the most advanced topic in Game Banker, but one of the one of the uh, benefits on the side of such a feature is that since you can look into the compatibility scripts to see their code, if and mo almost all of them are just wrappers for the new Game Maker functionalities. Uh, the, a lot of the view related compatibility scripts have um, they just convert your code basically into the new camera functionality and. If you don't understand how one of those systems work, I do think there's a lot of value in looking inside the compatibility scripts for, um, to see how they work. And that will hopefully give you some insight into what the new systems do. If you're using 3D like me, most of the time that means a lot of vertex buffers and matrices. If you did a lot of things with backgrounds, uh, most of those just convert backgrounds to, to sprites and there's not much to do there. If you're using the old sound system that Game Maker had, which to be very honest, you shouldn't be, that will just convert your your audio code from the old version to the new version. Those are fairly straightforward. There's a list of compatibility scripts inside Game Maker Manual. I'm just going to... Did I spell that right? Obsolete functions. Here we go. Okay, so there's more to do with, with objects, mostly object, get, and set, set depth. Tiles because the, uh, the way tiles ha work have changed. Um, some specialty view-related uh, view variables. Oops, ah, display-related variables and functions, in case you were using any of those. And obviously 3D, which is uh, probably where most of, probably where most of the, uh, the compatibility scripts have to do with. So if you want to see the code itself for any given compatibility script without having to import a game maker project, you can, go to, um, you can go to the location in your Game Maker installation where they're stored. If you've never done this kind of thing before, I'll try to go slowly. Going slowly isn't necessarily something I'm especially good at. On your C drive, or whatever your computer's main hard drive is, if you go to Program Data, and this is for Windows. Uh, I have no idea where this would be located on a Mac, unfortunately. I assume Macs have an analogous global uh, system program data folder to Windows. And by the way, this is a hidden folder on your computer. If you have hidden files and folders on your computer, like, not visible, 
which I believe is the default, um, you will want to uh, you will want to go to Windows Explorer and make them visible. Even aside from doing stuff like this, I think there's a lot of value in knowing what's on your computer. Uh, same goes for file extensions, but that's a story for another day. Uh, go into the program data folder, Game Maker Studio 2. Go into the cache folder. You will you may see more or less in here depending on how many uh, UI logs Game Maker has saved. In the cache folder, the runtimes folder. This is where all of the versions of Game Maker are stored. Uh, currently, the most recent stable runtime is 2.2.5.378. If you're watching this in the future, it may be something else. Crossing fingers for 2.3 to come out soon, but I've been saying that since like last November, so I can uh, I can wait. Inside the runtime folder, uh, this is everything to do with the game maker. Well, the runtimes, uh, how the YoYo compiler works, how the uh, basically how Gmail itself works. You can poke around in here if you're interested. I believe uh, sh somewhere in here, if you're interested in what the default shaders do, there's a shaders file, a couple shaders files. Uh, the ones that we are interested in is in lib, which contains a single zipped file called compatibility. And we can open this up. And in here is every single compatibility script that uh, the game maker might use. So if you're going to look at the D3D functions, for example, uh, you could open up this folder. You could see D3D, let's say you want to... Oh, let's say you want to, to D3D transform add translation. And if I if I open that up in a text editor, in my case Notepad++, or if you were to drag and drop it into the Game Maker IDE, uh, you could see it takes the arguments for what the D3D transform functions would have been, uh, X, Y, and Z translation in this case, and it instead performs some matrix math, which is what the new system would have you do. If you're not interested in 3D, which most people aren't, you can look in one of the other folders. Uh, let's go into background should be fairly straightforward. Uh, draw background, for example, should just turn the draw background into a draw sprite. And indeed it does. To use another example, um, some of the view functions have, uh, have changed. That's not really what I wanted. Draw, are they in draw? Okay, these aren't what I was thinking of, but draw get alpha, uh, draw set alpha. These will basically turn the draw, the GPU related, the GPU state functions into a GPU get and set alpha and that sort of thing. Uh, what was I looking for? Was it in, was it in view? View get and set. Okay, even though they're prefixed with uh, two underscores. Since Game Maker Studio 1 views were uh, an array index and uh, Game Maker Studio 2 no longer does that. It will change them into a, a view gets camera. It will change it into camera code. And it does all of this so that you don't have to. If you don't want to know what's under the hood, you don't have to. You can completely ignore it. And if you want to have a look at how some of the new camera functions work, uh, you can you can look inside the scripts, the compatibility scripts, and uh, you can see what they're doing to convert between the old and new. And so it goes. I don't really think I need to go through all of these and uh, and show you examples of all of them. You get the idea, hopefully. Now, it may be somewhat tempting to just use these compatibility scripts in a project, in a new project that you haven't imported anything for. I would not recommend doing that. I do recommend becoming familiar with how the system works and learning how to use them properly instead of just relying on the compatibility layer. Uh, the, one, the one exception being instance create. If you just want to write yourself a script that ignores the depth uh, parameter and instant in the, in the new instance create functions and um, just allow you, allows you to spawn something at X, Y in the default depth or something, go ahead. But for the most part, if you're doing something like 3D and you're using the old D3D draw ellipsoid or whatever functions, uh, those will have a significant performance hit over using something like a vertex buffer. These are not all perfect. For whatever it's worth, it's not that it's not that D3D draw block or anything has suddenly become slower in Game Maker Studio 2. It's more that in old versions of Game Maker, everything related to 3D was slow and there are now better options. This, by the way, is a cube. It's made of six faces, as you remember from geometry class, which in 
computer terms means 12 triangles, which in graphics card terms means 36 vertices. Um, the reason it's so slow is that it essentially creates the thing from scratch and draws it every single time you call the function, which is, uh, which is not super fast. If you really want to, um, the compatibility scripts will cache these things. If you look at D3D primitive begin texture, here we go. It will, it will cast them in a global variable. And if you really want to, you can draw these once and then just vertex submit the, uh, the cached version. But at that point, you really might as well just do the vertex buffer work yourself. The Game Maker Studio 1 still have the old joystick functions? I guess they did. I thought those went the way of Game Maker 8. I didn't even know those were in Studio 1. Um, I'm assuming this just converts them into, a, uh, yeah, into the gamepad functions. Gamepad access count, uh, joystick check button is just going to be a gamepad check button. Okay. Those are compatibility scripts. I do not want to close Notepad++. I'm actually still working on this file. Again, if you want to see them, they're in the runtimes folder, library, compatibility, zip file, and, uh, whatever category you're interested in. This isn't really what I was intending to talk about in this video, but since it came up in the, um, and it, since it came up when I imported the tower defense project in, I believe, the draw, the draw GUI event, there are some strings being drawn, um, and there is a string hash to new line function. These are not strictly compatibility scripts. If you were to, if you were to F1 or middle click them, they would open up a page, a, a page in the manual. These are actual, uh, this is an actual game maker function. And it does exactly what it says. It converts the pound sign into a, a new line character, uh, which would be backslash n nowadays. As you can see here, if you want to draw an actual pound sign and you had escaped it in Game Maker Studio 1 with the backslash, uh, things will get a little bit weird. I will run the game again in case you didn't see it earlier. Uh, you can see this is drawing instead of wave number zero, it is drawing wave backslash number zero. In Game Maker Studio 2, you can get rid of the backslashes entirely because the pound sign is no longer a character, a special character that needs to be escaped. So I'll run the game again. And you can see that's, uh, yes, that's right, because I, I still have string hash to new line there, which I don't actually want. I will get rid of that and then run the game. Oops. Is wave a global variable? Why did I do that? That makes no sense. Anyway, now you can see wave number. And then the actual wave number. Um, when it comes to compatibility, string hash to new line is it'll be inserted around every string that you try to draw, but it's not especially useful um, for anything that's not trying to use a new line character. Oops, it's not especially useful for anything that's not actually trying to draw a new line character. And you can get rid of it if you want. And even if you are using a pound sign to draw a line break in, a, in Game Maker Studio 2, you really might as well just uh, replace them all with backslash n and ignore that headache entirely. That's all I've got for compatibility scripts. They're useful to have. I would not recommend relying on them for a crutch. When you import a project from Game Maker Studio 1 to 2, it is probably not a bad idea to go through all of your compatibility scripts, see where they're used, and just update them manually anyway. But as I said, they do have value. And ultimately, if you want to make your game using the compatibility scripts, there's no technical reason for that to not work. And if that's a thing that you decide to do, then that's a thing that you decide to do. Hey. As usual, I will have this, uh, I will have this code in a GitHub repository in the video description. My name is Dragonite. I don't have a Patreon or anything, but there is a donation link down below if you're feeling generous. I hope you found that informative, and I will see you all later.